Hello, and the top of the morning to you as we turn to the scriptures for our daily reflections here at Kimmel Bay Church. And it's very good to have you with us. As we continue our series with our Lord's names, uh, titles are given to our Lord, uh, we turn to one today that our Lord uh, uttered himself. Jesus said these words. Let me read you just a verse or two from John's Gospel, chapter 12, where Jesus said this, uh, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The situation was that our Lord was preparing his disciples for the fact that he was going to leave them. He was preparing them for the, the fact that he was heading towards his death and indeed his execution, really. And uh, this little incident here uh, is preceded by a little verse that says that some Greeks were there and uh, they had expressed the desire to uh, see Jesus. What a wonderful desire. Uh, how, how wonderful it would be if many, many more folk in our world today uh, had that desire to see and to hear about our Lord Jesus. Well, we don't know what happened to those Greeks because we read that um, they saw Andrew and his, his brother, but uh, we read on then and we come to this verse, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed but if it dies, it produces many seeds. Here, you know, is a lovely picture, really, of uh, a picture of, uh, in order to meet the need of rescue from uh, sin, if you like, and a lost um, uh, future uh, in an eternity separated from God, um, how it was necessary for the blessed Lord Jesus to leave his lovely home in heaven, and to come to this earth and to take on human flesh, take on the human form, and not only that, but to live his 33 odd years here on the dusty lanes of that land by the Mediterranean, to go to this terrible death, this sacrificial death, this payment for your sin and for mine, and then to um, return to heaven by and by, which is wonderful, of course. He took on human form for you and for me. To put it another way, for him, if you like, uh, like a grain of wheat, <clears throat> he fell into the ground, as it were. He fell into our earthly scene. Um, and we can, we can quote this illustration here that Jesus makes. No one else could do this for us. No one else could do this for you and for me. No one else could uh, pay for the sin of the human race. Why not? Why couldn't anybody else pay? Well, quite simply, no one else could pay because no one else was a perfect sacrifice. Our Lord Jesus was sinless, absolutely without sin. And he was the only person qualified to pay the price uh, for our sin, for your sin and for mine. There's a few lines of a, an old hymn which I'd like to just read. And it's, it goes like this. It says, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Have you walked through that gate, can I ask you this morning? He's waiting to open the gate for you and for me and to let us into our heavenly uh, inheritance, if you like. He said that whoever comes to him will never, ever be turned away. Isn't that wonderful? I reckon that's one of the most wonderful verses, really. Whoever comes to the Lord Jesus will never be turned away. Out of this seed, and the illustration is there from the vegetable kingdom or the flower kingdom, out of this seed falling into the earth and producing more growth, uh, we're able to see two results, if I may suggest. 
two results from that seed going into the ground and dying. First of all, salvation. We've already discussed that, already said that, that by doing so, Jesus paid the price for your sin and for mine because he gave his life. He died to make us uh, fit for heaven if we're prepared to come on his terms. Secondly, it's not just salvation, but we must consider the fact that falling into that uh, dying situation produces service. As a result of this service, uh, as a result of this sacrifice, uh, Christ's sacrifice, if you like, uh, men and women are able to turn to him for uh, forgiveness and for cleansing and for new life. Isn't that wonderful? We've heard various folk on this spot on the, on the morning talking about the fact of new hope and new life and forgiveness of sins. I want to endorse that, what everybody else has said, really, and say, yes, this is wonderfully possible. And uh, I uh, became a Christian when I was <clears throat> 16, and that's a long time ago. And um, uh, when I told my dad that I'd become a Christian, he said, it won't last, Trev. He said, it won't last. I've tried it. What an encouragement, eh? Well, <laughs> and, you know, I'd love it if my dad was alive today to see, not that I'm still a Christian, but to see that Jesus is able to keep those who put their trust in him. <clears throat> Sixty odd years later, it has lasted. He has lasted. When I fear my faith will fail, another hymn says, Christ will hold me fast. And he does. He does. And as I close my remarks this morning, let me say this, that you're <clears throat> able in this service bracket to be of some use to God here on earth. Don't please go away with the idea that you're too humble, you're too timid, you're too backward, you're, you're not, uh, haven't been to Bible college or whatever. Don't go away with the idea that you're no use to God in his kingdom. Of course you are. He's, there's a job for Jesus ready at your hand. Tis a work the master just for you has planned. Two questions as I close. Two questions. Have each one of us availed ourselves of his wonderful offer? You know, uh, the outcome of his death and burial and resurrection, the outcome of him as that seed being uh, down into the earth and then coming up in new life. Have we availed ourselves of his wonderful offer by turning to him for forgiveness and eternal life? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish <clears throat> but have everlasting life. And secondly, if we have already asked the Lord Jesus into our lives, for forgiveness and so on, are we earnestly, earnestly, yeah, asking him to use us in his service? You know, we are his hands, we are his feet, if I may say that reverently. We are his voice on earth. Have we asked him to use us in his service so that we're part of that fruit resulting from this grain, if you like, being buried? Let me, as a prayer, close with some more lines from a hymn. And it says this, And yet I want to love you, Lord. Relight the flame within my heart. And I will love you more and more until I see you as thou art. Amen. Will you make that your prayer today? Goodbye. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day.